Hey there, Lickin' Riffers, and welcome back to yet another awesome guitar lesson here on Lickin' Riff, in which I'm gonna teach you how to get used to long distance chord changes. Okay, if you're here, okay, and you wanna jump here or here, okay, how to get used uh, to such uh, large leaps. Okay, but first of all, let me ask you a question. Uh, did you miss this shirt? I have not worn it for a while, and um, I love this shirt, so I hope you like it too, because I look good in it. Um, right, so this has nothing to do with chords, of course. Um, now, when you think about it, okay, you think long distance jumps, okay, you think about long distance jumps, um, and just, just, you know, put things in perspective just for a second, okay, this guitar is not a, uh, it's, it's a parlor guitar. It's not a full shape guitar. So this guitar is actually, the, the neck is basically the length of my arm. That's it, okay? That's all the ground you have to cover. On a normal guitar, you might have a couple more inches. That's it. So, um, so you can cover almost the whole neck, okay? My hands are not big hands and you can cover a wide length with just stretching between your thumb and your little finger, okay? So to put things in perspective, it feels like a big jump, but it really, really isn't. You're just moving your hand a little bit sideways, okay? So it's all psychologically, okay? It's all how you approach it psychologically, okay? It's all in here. So first, it, it, even if it feels difficult, you just need to move your hand a couple of inches to the side. So the first thing you need to get used to when you do long distance jumps, uh, long distance jumps uh, across the fretboard is to try it with barred chords first. Okay, try it with barred chords first. Um, try moving between E minor and E minor. E minor and E minor. Okay, E minor, open position, and E minor on seven. Okay, seven, bar on seven, A minor shape. Okay, you can also slide in between. Nobody says you can't slide. Um, I like to slide the bar and then put the chord on. Um, it's, a, it's an effect that I use. I've been using this effect for years. So. You can also drag the chord. And you can drag the fingers down. Okay, you can change between E and E minor, E and E minor, E minor, E minor, E minor, E minor. You can change. You can um, you can test yourself, okay, um, with with this sort of thing. So you can play A and then play C sharp minor on nine, okay, E minor shape. So A C sharp minor. Okay, get used to this. Just get used to making that jump and you'll see that it's not that scary. Okay, with, I'm talking about barred chords. Okay, doing it with barred chords. Just practice two chords. Okay, just one here, one here. Okay, so. See that at some point it starts becoming a lot of fun and you start slurring the slides and you start you know just, just you don't care about perfect sound anymore and imperfect sound in my opinion sounds better than perfect sound um, so so that's that's your first moves okay that's your two exercises E minor and E minor okay or E and E minor and A and C sharp minor Now, choose a shape, 
any shape, okay? Just choose any chord shape that you want to practice, right? Let's say, let's say C7, right? C7, which is a C chord with your little finger on three on the third string. Now move that around, okay? Okay, if you move it two frets up, you get D7. If you move it two frets up, okay, further uh, up the fretboard, you get E7. Okay, so C, D, E. So practice moving between C and D and then C and E. Okay, the picking pattern doesn't matter. to F7, uh, sorry, not F7, uh, G7. Okay, um, so you just play it at uh, eight. Okay, so it's eight, 10, nine, 10, okay? So just move between these two. Now, take A, the A chord, A major, and then play E7 here, okay, on five. So you have five, seven, six, seven. And uh, sing, you know, sing like uh, Speedy Gonzalez if you want. Just to have fun with the exercise, you're alone in your room. I'm alone in my living room, okay, with the dogs. Okay, my wife is in another room. So, yeah, I'm alone. This is a camera, okay, so. Okay. Um, so A and E7, okay, E7, C7 shape. Now, once you can do this, turn it into E7. 9 or E sharp 9. Okay, E9 would be okay, it would be 7767 seven, on strings 2 to 5. 7767. Seven, seven, okay? Okay? So do A and then do E9. It was a cold night. I was walking alone in the desert because it's always a desert, right? Now, if you want to get out of that uh, cliche um, desert picture, turn it funky, and instead of uh, in, it's it's E nine, okay, but instead of seven on the second string, you have eight. So now it's eight seven six seven. This is E sharp nine. So A and E sharp nine. And now it's uh, funk. So it's James Brown. Huh. Yeah. Huh. Play that chord. Huh. That old Eddie Murphy jokes. Uh, the, did he write those <laughs> into the lyrics? Uh, so. Okay. Once you get used to this, I wanted to try this chord. Okay, the one from the Lick and Riff intro. Okay. Um, This chord. So um, this is just another. This is just another form of E9. 
So um, it's a diminished chord shape, half diminished actually. It's minor seven flat five. Minor seven flat five when you see M7, uh, little b five, small b, okay, it's not really a b, it's a flat. Um, then it's minor seven flat five, it's called, also called half diminished. So, okay, it's a really prominent chord. Okay, so instead of having it sound diminished, Okay, let's make it sound like E9, so it's on 12. Okay, so you're playing 12, 11, 12, 11 on strings 2 to 5 again. Okay, 12, 11, 12, 11. Okay, so... Now, um, I don't know if you've noticed, watch me, watch me um, in slow motion, if you will. You can play with the, with the speed on YouTube. So, and you'll see that I look, I look at the place I want to go right before I make the change. Okay, it's like, look, look. Okay, and I'm back. Okay, so A, look at 12, jump there, and then back in, back to A. Okay, now you feel the, the guitar neck ending, so you can jump right back. But um, if I want to make, uh, you know, just a guess, you see, I was close, I was at 11. So I always look, okay, you, you always look where you want to go. Okay, now I have the feeling of the, the distance. Okay, but I'm still unsure, I still... Okay, so... And uh, the, the, then there you have it. That's, that's basically it. Uh, now, you can get used to any shape you want, okay? Uh, a, a shape that took me ages to get used to is the C-shaped bar. Okay, the C shape, the C shape bar. So that's what I did. I took a chord. Okay, let's say for example, just to go crazy and play A minor instead of A major. And then a bar on five would be F. Okay, if you play a C shape, bar on five C shape. So it's F. So you have A minor and F. And you see, I'm looking at the fifth fret. Just making sure that my aim is true. And we're back at the desert again. Okay, and it used to take me ages to put this chord on. Really, um, I, I can vividly remember this. I put the bar on and then I start putting my fingers one by one. My little finger, my pinky just refuses to obey. Okay, so yeah, now I can do it. Um, so yeah, it, it takes a little bit of practice, but the thing is to choose two distantly related chords and uh, just just move between those two, those two, those two until it's comfortable, and then again those. Again, two different chords and jump back and forth and back and forth and back and forth until it's comfortable and then try it with a different chord and you'll see that it gets easier as you go along. You stop, you stop fearing the distance, okay, just this distance, this, it's just this distance, this, this much. It's not that much of a distance. So keep, keep this in mind and you'll do fine. Check out the beginner, the beginner course lickandref.com slash beginner. Okay, I have a new beginner course. Uh, so check it out, and um, I will see you in the next lesson. Bye for now. Thanks for watching.